Welcome to 52 Miniatures. My name is Alex. During the course of the past year, I've been lucky enough to take part of Mini Wargaming Dave and Lazy Squire Games' great venture into creating a line of figures for gaming and collecting, the Ravaged Star, Veil Touched. And finally, I was getting my hands on the actual production miniatures. Great to show all of you interested in this line what everything ultimately boils down to, but also great for me personally. Another chance to be a part of this lovely venture. Normally, me and Dave communicate through Imperial Holographic Transmission Systems and transport miniatures back and forth by the means of Star Trek transport. This all requires massive amounts of energy and is starting to feel slightly irresponsible out of an environmental standpoint. Also, we all know what energy bills uh, look like nowadays. And thus, when sending me the final veil-touched production miniatures from Canada to Sweden, we ultimately relied on traditional means of transport, uh, postage. And that's why I'm now so very happy. It finally got here. The package is here. After many mysterious journeys, probably black holes were encountered, at least massive postmen eating sandworms, this package did not arrive on time. It in fact arrived late. Uh, as late as after the agreed upon deadline for this very video. I have no idea why. The Veil Touched crowdfund campaign is now wrapping up, regardless of my late little box of production miniatures, hand-picked by Dave, here to impress upon you the great quality of these miniatures to make sure you make your order uh, now a little late. They are great. By the way, the detail level is high. The plastic is soft enough to be durable during gaming, yet hard enough to make mold line scraping not a pain in the rabbit's fluffy behind. The detail level actually feels crisper than on the original 3D prints that were sent to me over the past year. I'm glad. Speaking to Dave, we decided to take this as an opportunity. Maybe the postman getting eaten was faith, and not just one big hungry dog incident. You see, as soon as the Veil Touched pledges are fulfilled, Dave and Lazy Squire Games will be releasing another Game Found campaign with two new Ravaged Star factions and an actual game. Two new factions. Angry space insect alien kind of things and equally as angry trigger happy space dwarf people. Yes, space dwarves. I couldn't be happier. I mean, I know. There, there's people that love the alien thing. I love the space dwarf thing. So instead of crying over spilled postman blood, we're here to tell you about all the great stuff soon to come. Being me, I see benefits not only for massive war games, lovely looking miniatures for the various sci-fi skirmish games I love. And now that I've seen the production quality of the veil touched, I mean, I can't really find any faults. All this is a good option for many styles of games or just for painting and collecting. Dave uh, did another leap of faith, and thank goodness for that, sending me some actual 3D prints of the new Space Dwarves. I mean, I've not seen these around anywhere yet. But one thing at a time, we'll look at these Space Dwarves at the end of the video. Because in order to jump ahead, I'll have to take a step back. One last test to do, to paint some final production miniatures. And make some art. Whoa, that's a bit of a turn of events. Art, where did that come from? Well, you see, I started thinking about the making a game business, a ravaged star game. All of a sudden, we're talking about stories and concepts, setting, world building, artwork, all of this. Something that became a source of inspiration. Creating a ravaged star concept piece. I know, it sounds pretentious. I can't help it. I made a miniature artwork together with creator Veronica, Florescentia Grotesque, a few videos back. A massive piece of miniature art in a frame. A little play with depth and dimensions all contained within a picture frame. Wouldn't it be cool to make a veil-touched artwork in a frame? My vision of a ravaged star world, whilst getting to paint one of the production miniatures. Finding the right frame can be made easy by buying a new frame from like Ikea or something, or it can be made exciting by trying to get something from a thrift shop. I found an excellent frame, I think rather new, but made to look old. The frame adds to the story of the diorama, like a framed relic or something. 
Making a framed piece like this is also, for me, a little liberating when it comes to visuals. Symmetry or concept is more important than what makes sense. Kind of liberating, really. I used bits from my bits drawer, going for a ruined yet futuristic scene with focus on one of the veil touched. I've not really paid attention to this miniature before. It's fabulous. A lot of this, for me, is about testing what might work. I have no idea. I don't have a kit with instructions. Instead, I try different bits, move things around, test different angles, different ideas. Seems less is often more, but then again, sometimes it's not. It's a lot of fun, the concept of taking this miniature away from the tabletop and instead imagining it in a painting or something, and then trying to build that painting. I'm thinking a sense of battlefield, but not necessarily in a cathedral, grim, dark, Warhammer style, rather something a bit more classic, sci-fi, a more colourful end of worlds. A foam core box felt like the best way to contain all this, leaving the back sheet off so that I can paint it separately, like a backdrop. I've seen great things by folk who can actually draw, who enhance the feeling of depth by actually painting an environment on the backdrop a continuation of whatever goes on in the diorama. I'm not skilled in that department and will go for something more conceptual. I wanted to try and be a lot more artsy with the colours on this, like something out of a movie or a comic. I found visual inspiration in this uh, comic by Enki Bilal. I love his stuff, it's challenging, the stories are weird, and with a lot of uh, French comic uh, boobs and sex but visually stunning. I very much enjoy some of the orange and teal settings, almost green and peach. The miniature will be inspired by the first veil touch I painted, a hellish demon brown with a clear blue armour. Both the miniature and the diorama received a zenithal prime. I tried to focus the white paint, the sense of light, rather dramatically. A lot of shadows and trying to get a sense of backlight in the diorama. On both the diorama and the miniature, I sketched out colours with transparent paints. More freely, using inks in the airbrush on the diorama, a little more controlled inks mixed with contrast-style mediums brushed on the miniature. After that, I settled for a limited amount of paints to mix up colours I found in my reference comic, at first doing rougher sketches, trying to get a sense of light or a mood rather than any detailed brush strokes. The diorama is going to be very moody, indeed. A dark setting being lit by a fiery sky, a, a sky, a fire. Likelihood it's not a pretty sunset, probably nuclear weaponry glow or something. The miniature is getting more of a classic miniature paint job, not as moody as the backdrop. I think mainly because I still find that difficult, but also I think it'll make the miniature stand out. It will hopefully be the very centre of attention. I very traditionally try and build up textures and contrast on the miniature, highlighting and glazing in different colour shifts in the shadows, with the first contrast style layer as a foundation. For me it's becoming more and more evident that I quite enjoy experimenting, like that's a very big part of the hobby for me. Building a little diorama like this, trying to paint it a little different than that. I try hard to just let things happen, and then be content with what happened. Moving on rather rapidly, not bogging down too much in details, because it is a bit of a learning piece for me. A rather bad idea is to try something new out and expect it to become perfect on the first go. That's going to dampen enjoyment and dampen the will of trying new things in the future. I mean, I still try hard, but I definitely try hard to let things go as well. Having created this piece, I realised uh, this is not mine. I not made this for myself. It should of course be a gift. These framed dioramas do make really good gifts. This is of course Dave's diorama. You don't know anything about it, Dave, and you know it probably has not arrived yet, but uh, if anything has fallen off during transport, just glue it back on. I hope you like the artwork and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it'll get there uh, eventually. Now, the rather epic reveal I've been waiting for. Space Dwarves. The Ravage star Imari. Just look at these two. Of course 3D prints, but by now we know the quality of the final production miniatures. I like them. And all the other stuff I've seen in the concept art. I mean, look at the guns, and the beards, and the female dwarves, and the massive battle robot suit dwarves, and speed bikes, and I can't wait to get my hands on more.
painting these Imari dwarves in this video would maybe have been the smart way to go. Instead, I made a frame diorama thing. I couldn't not do the frame diorama thing. So instead, I'm going to paint these dwarves in a not so distant future video. So we can get a better look at them. Well, I hope you tune in for that. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. And I hope you enjoy the time spent watching this video. Please press the like button, a, a rather helpful action. It spreads the word that this video exists and gives others an opportunity to choose to watch it or not. But at least they'll be aware of its existence. I also hope this has inspired you to try and make your own little diorama in a frame and maybe give it away to someone as a lovely gift. Thank you for watching. Bye. Thank you.